Hi, welcome to Numerics Video Blog. I'm your host, Jim Jocko. With me today, Tom Davis, PhD from the Numerics Client Solutions Group. Welcome, Tom. How are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me, Jim. So I wanted to take uh, just half a second. We've been talking in webinars, uh, on our video blogs, uh, on so many different topics, but the one thing that we really haven't done yet is start to put it together. And I really want to just talk just at a high level in this video blog of when we think of things like OIS discounting, you know, funding valuations, adjustments, we throw CVA, DVA into the mix, you know, we've been talking cheapest to deliver, we've been talking, um, you know, CSAs and standardized CSAs, you know, for this audience, I think it'd be worth just taking a minute, Tom, and, and, and give us the end-to-end -end connectivity on this. How does this all come together, and why people should be really concerned? So after 2008, uh, we realized that the, we needed different projection curves for uh, six month and three versus three month, and any different tenor. And there was a number of drivers for this, mostly uh, credit risk. So the longer the, uh, the the tenor, the more credit risk you have embedded in, say, the bank. Um, and the, once we realized there was a multitude of curves to use for projection, the question really arose: What curve should we use for discounting now? And so this was the matter of a lot of uh, thought and debate, and we see the market now moving, say LCH is moving towards an OIS, or overnight index swap curve for discounting. And the reason is, uh, it's collateral. It's fundamentally the reason is collateral, because when you have to fund your collateral, which you're posting daily now, how you fund that is you go out in the overnight market. So that's why we're using the overnight and, uh, to, to discount our cash flows. Now this really was the first time we realized that funding was crucial to the to the price of the actual derivative. And so if we think about now uh, all the different optionalities and, and features embedded into a CSA or credit support annex, um, we see that there's things like up threshold, down threshold, minimum margin amount, minimum transfer amount. All these things should really be embedded into how we discount because that represents how we fund. So funding value adjustment is really looking at throughout the lifetime of your trade uh, the different ways the CSA impacts that valuation. What's the cheapest, sorry, what's the most optimal uh, collateral security or currency to post through the lifetime of the trade? So you can see it's actually a complex operation where uh, you need uh, to understand the correlations between the market movements of your trade as well as the collaterally composed. The cheapest to deliver curve is really a, a, a snapshot today of what could be the cheapest, or sorry, the most optimal margin to post through the lifetime of a certain trade. However, to really capture the funding value adjustment, you need to do the whole complex calculation throughout the, and simulate throughout the lifetime of the trade. So argument, from an argument perspective, in terms of if you're managing your desks to maximum profitability, whether buy side or sell side, Right, it's almost the entire economic value adjustment that has to be t taken into consideration. Is that correct? Precisely. Uh, the front office and the and, and the sell side ha is always worried about profit and loss, P and L, and so this actually does impact that. If you put on a trade with a certain counterparty, you could get a better CVA, or but of course you could also in, in the lifetime of your trade net out worse. So it's really important for the front office to understand. Uh, the entire portfolio perspective and the entire bank perspective. And on the buy side, you really need to know when you're trading in a bilateral counterparty, sorry, bilateral margin situation, is the margin call correct? Am I over margined? Because um, you can actually reduce the efficiency of, the, of, of changing your risk profile with the trade. And of course, on the buy side, where their core competency is providing wealth management uh, in terms of portfolios, what they need to do is, is make sure that the margin cost in their firm doesn't actually over, overshadow the, the, the economic cost or the benefit of having that trade on portfolio. So let's talk about risk. And maybe we can buy, put in buy side or sell side, right? Because, you know, as we move towards standardization, right, standardization implies simplicity. But I think what we're experiencing is the exact opposite in terms of increased complexity. And there's holistic approaches to take this from, from an infrastructure risk management mindset and culture, or there's more traditional siloed approaches in terms of charging back from different departments to different groups to have that, that economic impact. But the, the question I, I'd like you to tackle, Tom, is, is really around, at a high level, what is the risk? Is it, is it improper hedging? Is it higher regulatory cost of capital? Is it all of the above? 
with without taking into consideration this kind of complexity. What are the biggest risks on the on the buy side sees is because they they typically outsource their collateral management solutions, and once once we move to a, a centralized counterparty a CCP, um, we see that margining actually happens at a much faster rate. So it goes from sometimes weekly that the buy side is doing now to intraday. So one risk they have going to this centralized clearing world is an increased cost of margining since a lot of third party solutions charge on volume of margin call uh, frequency. Um, in terms of overall, it is um, one of the biggest risks that I, I see and a lot of people have identified is once we make everything collateralized or a whole, a whole swath of the OTC world collateralized, it's actually going to be a big liquidity drain because the centralized uh, counterparties only require or only mandate very high quality uh, collateral. So that's cash or, or sovereigns. So if you look at the amount of collateral that's going to have to be transferred into the margin accounts, that's going to be a big risk for uh, the, the liquidity in, in, in the financial institution. Tom, I want to thank you so much for your time. And please feel free to connect with Tom on LinkedIn and on Twitter, and as well as numerics at NX Analytics or on our blog. We want to hear your feedback and talk about the topics you want to hear about. Thank you, Tom, and uh, enjoy your sunny Vancouver day. And uh, we'll catch you on the pages of numerics next time. Thanks, all. Thank you.